to another episode of our How To Arcade series. I'm Brian Peterson and today I'm checking out one of the coolest sound stages here at Full Sail University. Today, we're checking out motion capture. Here we are, I'm with Tyrone, our mocap instructor. Hi. Tyrone, what are we getting into today, man? Well, we're going to be recording some takes for the video game that we're producing. And uh, Sergio here is the director, and we've got uh, Kobe who's going to be performing some of those motions. Cool. Yeah. So where do we start with this? So we got to start talking about the cameras first. These cameras have two functions. They shoot out infrared light, and they can see infrared light. It's invisible to our own eyes. Now, the way that we get that information back to the camera is through the markers on the suit. The suit is just one giant Velcro patch. It's not just one camera or two, we have multiple. How many cameras are in here? We have 24 cameras. The reason why we have so many is that we want more space to work with. With two cameras seeing one marker, we can figure out its position in 3D space. Once that marker starts moving away from that overlapping view, well, then we can't see it. So we add more cameras. cameras to expand that volume. And that capture volume, that's the area in which all of the cameras overlap their view in order to record. And makes the 3D space that we work in. Correct. So Tyrone, we learned a little bit about the suits, the markers, and all of the cameras that are in the room, but what, what do we gotta do before we get into the building here? Well, absolutely. We have to figure out what are we going to record in the first place. Right. And determine the actions that you're going to record. So once you've figured out what you're going to record, put it down on a list, right. that way you come in prepared and you know exactly what you're going to get your performers to act out. How do we go about casting our performers? Well, once you determine the type of actions that you need, there's probably going to be a physical requirement to accomplish those actions, right? So if you have a martial arts heavy production, you wanna get somebody who's got experience with the martial arts. For example, in our production, it's all martial arts. It's a fighting game. So we have uh, Lance over here, who's a Muay Thai instructor, who is doing his thing, throwing his kicks. We can enhance it, we can change it later on, but we have a good basis for that, that action. So Tyrone, what is this, what is all of the martial arts dudes doing this for? We call that a T pose, sure. because for obvious reasons, it looks like T. a T. <laughs> uh, I also refer to it as a template pose, oh, okay. uh, because it's very easy for the cameras to see the markers on the perform. And it's a way to visually see that's where we're starting and that's where we're stopping. But and we also ensure when the tech is looking at the recording on the computer, they can verify whether or not there's a problem with the markers while they're being recorded. How many actual markers are on there? Well, our marker set, the, the configuration of the markers on the performer, we call it a marker set. And that marker set contains 49 markers. The reason why we have that number is that each body part from bending point to bending point needs to have at least three markers. Think of so, it as a triangle. So, so a joint and one in the middle and then the other joint. Correct. Sure. <laughs> so we have 49 markers all over the suit. How do we keep track of all 49 markers? The cameras don't see names or, or anything yeah, like that. Exactly. Uh, they just see points in space. So what we do is that we start off with recording what we call a range of motion. And it's just like how it sounds. We start them off in T-pose. Sure. And then we go through all of the motions that the body can achieve. Once we record that, we clean it up, and that's when we actually give it a name. And that template that we create is keeping track of the distances between the markers. So once those markers are within the specific distance within each other, the system recognizes it, and that's when it's able to label those names. So once we have that template created, and the system recognizes the performer and its marker set, then it's just a matter of going through each of the actions yep. and recording them. So all of this uh, recording that we've done in the capture volume is really just to capture the XYZ position of each of those points, right? We don't have any rotations to go with it or we right. can't really tell which body part it's tracking. We have to take it into another software package to take care of that. So once we export the, the file from Cortex, which is what we use to record, uh, the motions, we got to bring it into Autodesk Motion Builder. Motion and Motion Builder, Builder is, is going to be able to read that information and then we can then process it. Uh, so those points in space that are floating around, we have to associate that with a certain body part. So the five markers, for example, that were around the waist and uh, around the hips, well, guess which body part it's going to control? The hips. The hips. So we are going to use what we call here in uh, Motion Builder an actor. Right? Sure. So it t it's a proxy, it's taking its place 
from the real person, but Onto inside it. the computer. So once we fit that actor within the markers, remember that, that T-pose in the beginning yep. of the ROM? Well, we're gonna fit it into that T-pose. And once we make our associations from the markers onto each of those body parts, and we activate that actor, now all of those body parts will move according to the markers that were placed on it. Gotcha, because this is all the exercises that you did with Lance when you first started. The range of motion. And right. We, not only do we use it for setting up in Cortex, but we also use it to verify how well we did the fitting. So once we have all of this information processed, now we can apply it to a digital character. Because this is just a stand-in. We're not, we're not gonna use this for a final game or right. animation. But if we tell this character, this uh, bound character with a skeleton, well, we can then tell that character to follow that stand-in. And once we have that going, now it's a matter of baking it out, getting those keyframes, those actual rotations and positions uh, recorded onto the skeleton. We can then send it to the animator. They okay. can enhance the animation. If there are right. any problems, they sure. can correct it, but then they make it fit to what they want for the video game. Gotcha. Motion capture is just a really good first step. You certainly want the animator to get in there, manipulate it to right. what the, the production is asking. Because you're just giving a realistic life movement to these 3D models. It's, it's a nice uh, uh, collaboration between between what was recorded and what the animator can do with that information. Right. <laughs>